institution. And historically, we have seen a great positive correlation between the professional development of our tutors and our staff and student satisfaction with the learning support services. And when students are more satisfied, they're more likely to return. If they're more likely to return, they're more likely to be successful. So we've definitely seen such a strong correlation. And so for us, professional development of our tutors is not only valuable to help with that aspect, but also to show our tutors how we value them and that we're willing to invest the time into them, especially as a lot of our tutors are peer tutors. So they're also students. So, you know, definitely benefiting from both sides there. Um, so to begin with as an institution, we have eight campuses and we wanted to find a way to standardize that professional development across all eight campuses. And we did so by creating what we call tutor tips, which is, uh, a program that starts when we intake staff for the first time. So if you're a tutor, um, a lab assistant, uh, a, whatever the title may be, if you're providing academic support to students, you start with us. So let me go ahead and start sharing. And we started with a libguide that kind of housed all of that information. So we already kind of started on a digital site a little bit and we were able to provide uh, all of our new trainings through here. So if a new tutor came in, they were able to get started through um, some basic videos with questions that we would have discussions around. And then uh, some four, we have four set up as a primary starting point for uh, getting our new people in trained and ready to go. And this benefits not only the tutors, but over not only the staff, because it gives them a starting point to say, here, use this training when you're working with, with your new tutors or your peer tutors but also for those tutors to go back and reference the information if they need to at any time. So having it be as accessible as possible was very important to us. And then in addition to this basic starting point, we also in 2015 began our, our tutor symposium. And what we did with that was decided it'd be a great idea to bring all of our tutors across these eight campuses together in one physical place, uh, so that they can network and learn and take best practices and really find ways to connect with other staff members and other tutors, especially as it's sometimes you feel like you're kind of siloed and these are the only the problems I'm seeing, but really there's so many connections that can be made across the campuses. And then also to take best practices. What are you doing at your campus that's really connecting with your ENC 1101 students? And how have you created instructional materials that you're providing to supplement and, and bring them uh, across those campus borders? And it was, it's been really fantastic. We've had pretty great success. We see about 150 tutors at each one of those symposiums. Uh, then you know, 2020 hit and being in a physical space to, space together was no longer a possibility, right? Uh, just like for us here today. So we also needed to make a quick transition and figure out uh, how we were going to, to shift to make sure that we were still providing that professional development and to do so in a way that would benefit our uh, tutors as well. So we decided to transition to a virtual symposium and it was set up very similar to the way we have historically done ours, which include a keynote speech with breakout sessions, very much like a one day conference for our tutors to attend. And we really wanted to find a way to connect to the immediate needs of the time and, and what we are seeing right now. And also to bring in um, and see like how we can push and expand our reach a little bit more. So what we started with was a topic and we, just like a lot of institutions, wanted to focus on empathy and equity and academic support. Um, we are definitely seeing, I mean, we've all had to transition so quickly our support, even through the presentations that went before me, we were seeing how all of our support very quickly switched to being online through chat rooms, through Blackboard Collaborate or Canvas or Zoom or whatever means it is. And it was, difficult for everybody. For our students, it was difficult to adapt. For our tutors, it was difficult to adapt. And so we wanted to kind of honor that and say, how are we providing the best support we can to our students and to one another, um, especially during this time, especially knowing that moving forward, this isn't something that's going to go back to what it was before. This will always have something of, of what we're seeing now added to it. So empathy and equity were really important to us. And we put out a call for proposals and we're very lucky to have people all across the campus from various departments um, eager to present on topics that would really benefit our staff 
and really make sure that the support that they are and the tools and resources that they can get from these breakout sessions would make uh, a critical improvement and impact on the students that they're serving. So what we also then needed to do was figure out, well, what is this going to look like moving forward also in, in, in like a physical, well, not physical, but in a way that they can uh, manipulate. And so LibGuides are every librarian's best friend. They're, you know, we've seen them again today as well. And we wanted to utilize a, a LibGuide for not only this current symposium that we were planning, but also for one moving forward. So what we did is created a LibGuide for the symposium. And we wanted to kind of very similar to what we're seeing in, in today's conference as well, have a place of a repository of sorts of information from previous symposiums. But this is kind of a new one because our, our 2018 and 19 have our uh, guides up with the programs and everyone who spoke and was a part of it. And moving forward, we wanted to make sure that all of the content was included. So what I want to do is kind of walk you guys through this a little bit and show what worked and, and how it really benefited our tutors. Oh, the other thing I see I'm bouncing around too much. The one thing that was fantastic with this as well is not only were we able to ask presenters from our institution, but because it was virtual, we were able to widen our, our reach and reach out to uh, people from other institutions. So from FIU, or I think we had a couple of people from University of Miami come as well, and they were able to present and participate through Blackboard. So we went from, like I said, our average of about 150 uh, attendees to 219 this fall. So a much wider reach and primarily because they didn't have to drive, which is always super fun to avoid in Miami. So uh, that increased attendance was it's super important because it translates to more tutors improving their skills and how to support their students on a day-to-day -day interaction. Um, so what we did is we created our agenda and everything we wanted to make sure was very easy to uh, navigate. So from here, we were able to bring our uh, links directly into a room so that they could jump from room to room depending on what session they wanted to attend but more so than just being an agenda like i said we wanted it to be a sort of repository moving forward so what was really important for us during the day was to record the sessions create uh, transcripts of all of them so that we can make sure that they were ada compliant and provide all of those resource materials so that they could be held here for for future uh, activities. So if we look, you can see we had a ton of breakout sessions. Uh, some of our fan favorites were Battling Bias and Embracing Equity, had a great turnout and great responses. You could see from before the session would begin, so leading up to the symposium, tutors were able to see a little bit of the overview, a little abstract, some objectives. Uh, if uh, the day or so before, we asked if the presenters would submit their material so that we could put their uh, slide decks up if they were using them, because that's always the number one question at a conference of, can I get a copy of that, that, that PowerPoint you used? And so they had a preview of it with a download as well. And then something that we did that was new this time was we utilized a program called Hiver. So one of the things that we really didn't want to miss out on was that networking and that discussion amongst tutors, because that was really important. That's how they were able to make connections on a personal level and kind of get in a little bit deeper when it comes to the content. So we use a program called Hiver. Um, we really enjoy it. We've used it for a couple of conference symposium style things. And what this allowed us to do was have the participants kind of like any social media thing, provide feedback, give it a like, and have conversation on this as well. And this is live. So even as this continues, if I have a new tutor that starts and I'm thinking, you know, we really should do uh, a midterm professional development moment, let's do a training on something that was hosted at the symposium that maybe not everybody got to go to, we could bring up the video, watch it, have the, the staff comment on it, have a discussion, pull up the source material. So for me as a supervisor, it's a great resource. And for my staff, they're still able to get uh, all of the little pieces. The other thing that we really liked is because it was very quick. So like I said, this is a one day event that we do real tight in about four hours. And we had, I believe 18, no, 16 breakout sessions, which is a lot <laughs> and can be difficult because there's such great content, but our staff can't get to it all. So the other nice thing is they got to pick something from session A, 
something from session B, but because everything's recorded, they can go back and review the materials of things they didn't attend. So just to give you a little bit of overview of the topics we discussed, we had people come in from um, our from Citrus Health, who works on our the Hialeah campus specifically and does a lot of work with our students. Um, he teamed up, Gabriel teamed up with one of our tutors to talk about, um, I just lost where I was here, the source of empathy and equity. So having an ability to talk about mental health during this was fantastic. Uh, we have a great program that's talking about the promoting values of empathy and equity while providing writing support to English as a second language um, was a great workshop as well. The other important thing here was trying to find a way because we're pulling from tutors across all eight campuses to ensure that the topics really were broad. We wanted to make sure that we were not just doing everything about writing, which you know my writing heart loves to do. So I have to make sure to distance myself and, and make sure we're hitting everything. But we had a great time bringing people in to talk about how to use visuals when it comes to working with STEM students. Um, we even had a great workshop, especially as we move forward. And, and I think even in other uh, presentations, we talked about this, the increased use of videos and how are our tutors creating supplement videos to support student learning outside of the classroom. And so having a breakout session that taught the do's and don'ts of video development and editing and everything is a great resource. So all of this, I think, was a great way to bring us together and bring us into uh, a virtual platform that didn't lose anything from our physical meetings. Now, afterwards, we do host a survey with our tutors to see what worked, what didn't work, how was it going, and the feedback was fantastic. So 93.8% um, of those surveyed said that the symposium remained engaging in a virtual format, which was definitely something that we wanted to make sure was happening, especially we've all been in classes or meetings where you're online and it's very easy to start to get that glaze over. So we were thrilled to hear that feedback from them. Um, and even more so the development of the LibGuide, 92% of our attendees said having this in an uh, archived manner where they can go back and review this was really critical to them. So that was fantastic as well. The other good thing is LibGuides. We, like I said, we love LibGuides. We're using them all the time and finding new ways to use them, I think is really important. And 97% of our, so almost everybody from uh, the symposium who completed the survey said that this was very easy for them to navigate, especially when you're dealing with breakout rooms and going from place to place can be very tricky and difficult. So making sure that we, knowing that we have a platform that can manage that for us, that we already have was really helpful and, and can be a great thing moving forward. So as we continue to you know move forward from this, we've definitely taken a lot of best practices. We do know that as uh, we will be surveying students afterwards, we, we typically survey students to see satisfaction, to see how at the end of terms, to see how it's going. Um, after every tutor tip symposium, we do see an increase, which has been fantastic. So I'm eager to see how that looks after our virtual one, if we continue to see that increase. Um, but even from feedback that I've received from my immediate staff and from those around us, they definitely picked up a lot of tips and tricks that have really supported them moving forward and they feel like they're able to give students more support. Even more so because our topics were focused a little bit more holistic in the sense of looking at the student as a whole instead of always just being content specific when we talk about topics like mental health and equity, that they were able to support students outside of their academic uh, realm. And kind of what was discussed earlier too about how you know, when students see academic support, they just think academic is everything. And we see this with within libraries and tutoring where our students are coming in for questions that can really run a gamut. So if we're able to provide those students, those tutors with the resources that they need to be successful in giving support, it's absolutely crucial. Even more so, like I said before, because a lot of our tutors are peer tutors. So a lot of them are currently students as well. So they're benefiting from all of this, knowing what's happening behind the scenes and where support exists so that they can share it with their peers as well. So let me, sorry, I got distracted by the chat. <laughs> um, but what I also, so moving forward, what we're looking at and, and what we really got us feedback from the participants is they would love to see a hybrid model. And I could not agree more. I really think that we learned so much through this 
iteration of creating tutor tips and, and doing the symposium online. And it's something that we're definitely not going to walk away from. The biggest thing is for us to reach out and, and make sure we're making connections with the tutors and we're leading into their professional development as much as possible. And we can only do that by making it as accessible as possible. Following our theme of what we were talking about in our symposium of 2020 of empathy and equity, we want to make our professional development equitable. And we can do that moving forward into, I keep recalling it our improved normal instead of our new normal by making sure that we are supporting them whether it's physical and space, and they can actually arrive and get to where we are meeting, but also having it be online. So a blended modality, just like we're going to see with tutoring probably moving forward or library instructions moving forward, will also occur with our professional development. I think we know now that there will always be some kind of, we'll be streaming it from a classroom if we're meeting in person so that we can make sure we're reaching out to as many people as possible. I also have a tendency of talking very fast. I know AJ said that as well. Um, if you guys do have questions, I'm trying to see if I can answer them along the way. Um, LibGuides for us were a really, um, yeah, Hiver was the name of the program. Um, and we've used this now for some student, we, we will hear about this in the next session because you got two MDC back to back, so no spoilers, but Hiver was used with our, um, student symposium base as well and students really like they're very familiar with commenting and liking and sharing and all of that so creating a place for them to do that through libguides was really helpful for feedback and it was able to connect with the presenters as well afterwards so the presenters can go in and write comments back and and find ways to interact and make connections so that was really fantastic um so i just wanted to say uh to me, it sounds very brave of you to have a comment section on your guys, <laughs> but I assume that I can't, like me personally, I can't go in there and mess it up and put nasty stuff on your comments or something. I mean, you probably could. No, no, <laughs> you do have to create a Hiver account, which is fine. Okay. Um, and there are a lot of options you have within Hiver. So, you know, not to be the sales pitch for Hiver, but on the back end, the admin has the ability to say before we're posting, we're going to, we're going to approve first. You, you have options. So it definitely helps uh, navigate that. And like Angel said, he'll explain more during his presentation because they used it as well. Um, and it's been really successful. I'm trying not to steal his thunder too much, <laughs> but it's been a great tool, which also shows, especially for a department with learning resources where you have libraries and tutoring, how these programs can really bridge between both sides of the house and support students and support professional development with staff as well. And it all really goes together nicely. Um, yeah, and having it in LibGuides, I think is really, really helpful. LibGuides as a platform is something that our students have become familiar with, our faculty have become familiar with, and our staff as well. And there's so many possibilities you can you can do with uh, LibGuides and creating this and housing this and having everything here allows for a very easy way to search and go back and pull resources. And, and like I said, one of the biggest things is moving forward as we look at the between now and our next symposium, if I am leading an area and I'm encouraging my staff, hey, I would really think you guys should go to these breakout sessions, I can then pull the other ones and say once a month, we're gonna watch a video and discuss it together and talk about how we're gonna continue this. And so it allows that professional development to continue through the year as opposed to this one shot, one day, you either were there or you weren't and it's gone. So it really makes a lasting impression. And again, as we continue to develop our tutors and into professionals, they are going to provide better support to our students and that is just going to ripple effect to help with so much you you see and again like i said when the students come back to more to receive more tutoring that's where you see you know retention increase completion increase all of these things that our institutions love hearing about and we can really support them in that way i want to make sure i'm not running out of time because i so it, you're but. at your time, but we have five minutes until the next presentation. If anyone has any questions for Caitlin, I invite you to unmute and just talk if you'd like. Um, if